Hey buddy, it is Adrian for ProductionCrate.com. Today I'm going to show you how to approximate the look of the mirror dimension from Doctor Strange. When real boys do this effect, it's obviously very complicated. What I'm going to show you how to do is how to get as close as we can uh, as cheaply and easily as possible without having to go into a 3D application. We're actually going to start out in Flickr just because I need something to put in the background. It doesn't really matter what it is. You know, if you're making your own short film, obviously you're just going to use your footage. Uh, a lot of the fight scenes in this movie take place in a city, so I'm just going to find a background of like a city street. Maybe turn our safe search on since I'm making a video here. Let's just make sure we're looking for something that we're actually allowed to use and alter. Let me just go ahead and click this button here to download that. I'll just download it in its largest resolution available. In After Effects, let's just go ahead and make ourselves a new um, 1920 by 1080 standard composition. And we'll just go ahead and drop that image into it. And we'll frame it up. Cool, am I blowing your mind yet? Go ahead and pre-compose that. We'll just call that our background. Move all the attributes over. Perfect, you're doing fantastic so far. Let's head over to Production Create as well. We're gonna wanna go into our section for backgrounds and we are looking for this one here, which is the uh, low poly background, motion graphics background. It's just a black uh, ever shifting background. This is eventually going to become uh, sort of our mirror wall. So I'll just temporarily set it to like a screen transfer mode so I can see through it and just frame it up how I like. Okay, so let's just go ahead and pre-compose that as well. We'll call this our uh, fractal map, I guess. Move all the attributes into that new comp, and we're gonna go ahead and open up that new comp. And now what we need to do is kind of remove all of the contrast from this. So right now, uh, it's very dark. It's about as dark as my past, which is, you know, too dark. So why don't we just go ahead and add a levels effect to it? And we're gonna bring up our input black here so that it's not quite so dark. And what we wanna do is try to just bring everything into the realm of being a 50% gray. Now uh, we have this info palette up here that kind of tells you some information about the colors. So how we can tell if they're close to 50% gray is let's just do this. Let's make a new solid. So I want this to have you know, no hue, no saturation and 50% brightness. So that's just a standard gray. And then if we hover over that and look at our info panel here, you'll see that everything is at 128, except for the alpha, of course. So uh, we want to get our red, green, and blue all, you know, approximately to 128, but we still need a little bit of variation. We need to go up and down. So let's see how we're doing here. These are, uh, you know, looking a little bit low. So let's just brighten that up. I'm getting 100, I'm getting 90. Okay, so here's a little bit more what we want it to look like. You see we have some values that are above 128 and some that are below 128. I'm also using my brightness and contrast tool just to help dial this in a little bit because we really want this floor area to be as close to that 128 value as we can get. All right, that's pretty good. So we can uh, just leave that alone for now. We can move back into our uh, main composition here, turn off that fractal map so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to take just a detour here to, to show you a little something about how these color channels work. If we were to duplicate this and set the topper one to an add transfer mode, you can see it just makes everything brighter. What it's really doing is it's just it's just mixing these colors together in a, an additive way. Um, so what we kind of want to do is separate it into different color channels and then mix those channels back together. So that's really easy to do with an effect called shift channels. And we can just throw that on and we can set this first layer to take our red from the red channel but turn off the other channels the green and the blue so now it's just going to be red right and if we duplicate that control d and on this next one we'll turn our green channel back on but turn our red off now that's just going to be green and if we duplicate it again and on this top one turn our blue channel back on and turn our green channel off with our red channel still off as well, then that's just going to be the blue values that are in this image. 
And then if we go ahead and change this all back to an add transfer mode, now all the colors are adding back together and it's like we never did anything. Top one is blue, or this middle one is green, bottom one is red. So if I grab one of these, say I just grab the green and I move it, you can see our colors start to separate. So you can use this to make some cool glitchy effects, or I could just, you know, go off on a tangent about things you could do. If you want to just uh, maybe just scale this middle one to like 101 and the one above that to about 102 for example, then uh, that's how we can get kind of this chromatic aberration on the edges, right? So uh, just so you know, that's that's how you do that. That's how that works. We're, but that's not what we're doing right now. We're just gonna scale this all back to 100 and we're going to use a displacement map. So let's start with this red one and I'm gonna go ahead and add a displacement map effect to it. And we'll set it to use our fractal map as our displacement. And, um, you know, we're, we're already there. You just, you change your, uh, your maximum horizontal and vertical displacement. If I solo this layer, you can see more what it's doing. If I crank it way up, it's kind of just displacing it and giving us these sharp edges here because it's coming from our fractal map. Like you see this triangle here, how it's lighter than the other surrounding triangles. So it's going to affect what's below it differently. So you get that hard edge, right? That's really ugly. That's too much. So uh, we want to just keep this subtle. Since we're displacing all the channels differently, it's really going to kind of multiply the effect. So just subtlety is the name of the game. So I'm just going to maybe set it to five and negative five for this one layer. We're going to be getting some some ugly black edges or transparent edges, depending on if you have your transparency on or not. You can fix that easily with a motion tile effect. Drag that on and change the output width and height to something bigger than 100 and click mirror edges, but then take your displacement map effect and put it below the motion tile. So the motion tile happens first and then the displacement and that will fix your edges. So we have that displacement there. It's, you can't really see it because it's very subtle. We have the option to turn it up later if we choose to, but let's go ahead and copy both this motion tile and the displacement map effect to our green layer, paste it on, and so now here we have the red and green channels mixing together, that's why it's very yellow. And let's just change these uh, amounts. So maybe I'll change the horizontal displacement to like uh, negative 10 or whatever, and the vertical to like maybe zero, I don't know. Just something subtly different. And then if we copy those again and paste them onto our blue layer, maybe change the vertical displacement to negative 10 and the horizontal to like two. Negative two. Cool. Now we've got that displacing in a different direction. So um, I may have overdone it with the subtlety here, which is rare for me. That's okay. We're just going to, you know, change our values. So I'll change this bottom one instead of five, negative five to maybe 10 and negative 10. I'm just going to double everything. If you kind of play around with which ones you want to go in which direction, you're going to get, your colors are going to separate differently. So the colors that they mix into are going to end up being different. See, as I move this around, it just kind of changes the whole look of the thing. And also, you know, the pixels that exist in your image are going to affect that as well. So maybe I'm somewhat more happy with this. So another thing we can do is turn our fractal map layer back on so we can see it. And we can put it on like an overlay transfer mode, and that'll give us a little bit of shading. And if it's not enough, this might seem counterintuitive because we pulled all the contrast out of it earlier, but you can put some back in if you want with our curves or our levels. You know, you can darken up the shadows if that's what you want or the highlights. The overlay transfer mode is going to kind of ignore the, the medium tones, but add in the lighter tones and then subtract the darker tones. So it's a good transfer mode to use for what we're doing here. Let's just preview this. Cool, I'm liking the look of this. It looks like we're looking through this, uh, you know, ever evolving fractally glass. Um, so another thing we can do is if you want to just duplicate that fractal map, we can remove our curves. We don't need it for this and just solo that for a sec. You can add this effect called find edges. And if you invert it, that'll give us like some white highlights around the edges. And also it gives us some, some like mess. So if we add a levels as well, we can easily just choke that out. So we're left with pretty much just the edges. If you want to go ahead and set that layer, not to overlay like this because that's silly, but maybe to an add transfer mode, then you're going to get some highlights around your edges. And there's some cool stuff we can do with that. You can make it glow with a simple glow effect. It's kind of, you know, somewhat subtle. And that, that looks pretty cool actually, but you can also colorize it. Maybe if we add a, a vibrance effect, 
This is a third party effect. It's from a uh, video copilot, but it's free. If we just drop that on and maybe change it to more of a gold hue, then we can have some cool like gold highlights, which I think in the movie, it kind of appears like this, maybe not as pronounced as that. So if we turn the vibrance down a little bit, you know, yeah, I'm thinking that looks pretty good. Just one more thing. So um, let's say we wanna maybe make our, our fractal wall a little bit more complicated. That's fine, we can do that. If we go back into the fractal map, and maybe just duplicate this layer and kind of offset the time and stretch it out a little bit like this. So we have these tall, tall shapes here. And if you put that on something like an overlay transfer mode, then you'll have these, these taller shapes kind of interacting with your, your um, shorter ones to add a little bit more variation. And if you go back into our comp, you can see how that's affected the look. I don't like what it's doing to our floor, so I'll just mask that part off. Change that to a subtract mask, feather it out. Who's going to stop me? Cool. And you, you can play with that all day. You can really do as much as you want with that. Another thing I like to do that's just kind of the icing on the cake is just add an adjustment layer with a glow effect on it. And just so we can really see what we're doing, I'm just going to turn the intensity way up for just a second so that when we turn down the threshold, we can really see exactly what's being affected. Because I really only want this glow to be coming from the sky. So that might be as close as I'm going to get. So let's turn the intensity back down to one and turn our radius way up. Now um, all this does, I just think it looks pretty cool because the, the uh, glass or whatever you want to call this is going to be reflecting this, it's going to be refracting the sky and kind of changing the shape of it, which is going to affect how our glow works. So we're going to get a little bit of flicker and I just think it's very naturalistic looking and it's just going to look nice. Um, I would only really do this if I have a blown out sky or just something bright in my scene. But let's just go back to flicker and let's find a different background. So I'm going to search for maybe a temple because that's kind of just the other type of location that might exist in this movie. And I just want to find one real quick that is a similar perspective here that has a, a ground in it. Um, this is cool. Doesn't really matter that much. This is pretty. So let me download that in its original resolution. And we'll just open up our background comp, drag that son of a gun in, frame it up. There you go, not bad. So this kind of it's come out very yellow just because, you know, different images are going to be affected differently with your different color channels, but it still works. And that's just, that's what we were trying to do. It works as uh, we anticipated it. So I am going to leave the tutorial here. If you like what you've just seen, I cannot recommend enough that you check out our website, productioncrate.com, because there you're going to find lots of different stock footage, including these magical capes. Uh, some lightning, some sparks, and magic hit effects, some spells, and of course these magic circles. If you like the magic effects and you want more information about them, you can look at some of the other tutorials, like this Doctor Strange slash World of Warcraft inspired magic effect, or this one about Harry Potter battles. Oh yeah, we have one about shooting fireballs as well. Or, um, you know, maybe you're not here for magic. Maybe you just like Marvel superheroes. All right, cool. Let's check out this Iron Man heads up display tutorial or the Ant-Man shrinking effect. Or maybe you don't even like those guys. Maybe you're just all strange all the time. That's cool. Me too. Check out the other tutorials in this series. And don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you want to message me directly on Twitter, the option is there as well.